Have you ever been told that your ex was toxic or perhaps you feel you always wind up in toxic relationships? How can you finally stop this vicious cycle and meet an involved relationship ready man? What if I told you that labeling people this way could actually be holding you back from finding true soulful love? Stick around because today we are diving deep into why the word toxic might be doing you more harm than good and what you can focus instead if you want to finally stop the vicious cycle of unfulfilling relationships and meet and keep the one. Let's be real. We've all had relationships that didn't work. This is why we are not in them anymore. But if you only focus on how toxic your ex or relationship was, you'll fail to grow to be ready for a soulful, loving relationship, the kind in which you too can continue to grow and enjoy deep emotional connection with your partner. Stay with me if you want to know how you can meet the one, a man who is eager to love you and grow with you emotionally, spiritually, financially in a healthy relationship. But before I reveal it, let's understand why the use of the word toxic is not so helpful. Why I don't like the use of the word toxic. Well, first of all, this is a generalized word that is very popular in the media that doesn't provide us any insight into what actually is the problem. So when you use it in relation to your ex or your old relationship, you end up stripping yourself of a valuable insight into what didn't work for you. Moreover, if you think your ex is toxic, there is quite a large potential that he thinks similarly about you. There is a reason you didn't get along. Even if you are the most wonderful person, there has to be some accountability on you for the relationship not working. Here is the real deal. When you don't take personal responsibility, you may wind up feeling victimized and helpless to change your situation. Analyzing so many relationships in my work with couples and individuals, I see some patterns. This is what many women struggle with. The first is that a lot of them don't know their needs and boundaries in a relationship. The reason why many women struggle with this is because we are often raised to be focusing on how we need to adjust ourselves to be successful, to fit into the family, society, and so on. So when we seek a relationship, we are wired to try to make ourselves likable, lovable, adequate. Because of this, many of us make uninformed choices in partners. We focus on what we think we like and later down the road, we find ourselves confused and frustrated that this person is not meeting our emotional needs in the relationship. Another problem is that a lot of women don't have any dating and courting strategies. Instead, they just fall in love with the first cute guy that checks some of their boxes based on these superficial criteria that are not based on their deep needs. And again, that is because we often don't know ourselves. So what happens is that we become attracted to people that mimic our relationship with parents that are not providing us with enough love, attention and time together. This is usually an unconscious attempt to achieve harmony with such a person as this would somehow prove to us that we are worthy. It would heal that old wound from a family of origin. But it doesn't happen because we are often not aware of it. Instead, we repeat the same patterns with this toxic partner and then the next one and another one. But how can you avoid this? Stay with me till the end because I will tell you the two most important things that will help you break this pattern. In other words, if you want a secure, healthy relationship that will last, I will tell you what to focus on. So let's keep the word toxic for industrial waste, for pesticides and such. That's toxic. People are not toxic. Their behavior may cause you to feel uncomfortable in some ways. It's essential to know exactly what is triggering you. If you just simply say this person is toxic, you don't get to see exactly what didn't work for you, what caused you to suffer with this person. And you should ultimately know that just as much as they were toxic to you, there is a big possibility that you are maybe toxic for each other. So generalized labeling is just not helpful on the path of real true healing and meeting a great partner. So what do you need to focus on then? If you want to heal and be ready for better relationships, I recommend some self-reflection. 
instead of spending your precious energy and time on labeling your ex, I would recommend asking yourself what attracted you to him. You will most likely come to the memories of some good things instead of remembering only what didn't work out for you. When we experience real healing, we can see both sides of people, the positive and the shadow side, the ones based on negative emotions that trigger others. The second question to ask yourself is why I stayed even when things were not good for me? In other words, there is always what we call in therapy secondary gain. Secondary gain is something we get from a certain situation that we may not be aware of. Like staying in a relationship that doesn't work for us can bring us some secondary gains like feeling good about yourself because you are dedicated, faithful or just not a quitter. Gaining insight into this will help you feel more empowered and realize that you actually make your own choices. This is something I help my clients with. We identify what led them to make their choices in partners. We explore all the positives and negatives because healing means integration and honoring your past self while figuring out where you want to go in the future. This means you need to see what works and what doesn't work for your future self. Having this awareness is essential. That's going to empower you to figure out what your deeper emotional needs and boundaries in relationships are. Imagine how much better choices you can make this way. So let's not talk about narcissistic, toxic axes. Instead, let's become empowered and take charge of our own life. Let's talk about what led me to be attracted to and stay with this person. Moreover, let's talk about where you want to go, what it is that you want and what it is that you don't want. I know it can be hard to navigate all this alone. Sometimes it takes us decades to arrive at that good place. You know, feeling confident, satisfied, peaceful in a relationship you've always wanted, going on vacation together, raising children, enjoying quiet evenings while falling asleep on his shoulders. What is it that you crave? This is all up to you to determine, but if you want to get there, the path doesn't involve dealing with toxicity. <laughs> While we are talking about toxicity, you just may attract somebody and be attracted to somebody who is maybe not toxic in that particular way in which your ex was. But you may attract somebody who is slightly or completely different, but also not right for you. So you're staying in that space of labeling without going deeper into what didn't work for you may only lead to different ill-fitting relationships. What should you do instead? So we already expressed how you can explore what attracted you to this person. What's the second thing that is super helpful if you want a loving, fulfilling relationship? I invite you to take personal responsibility and see how it could be that maybe you contributed to problems in the relationship. I want you to know that even if you are with a horrible person, narcissistic, toxic person, you contributed to that dynamic in some ways by not setting boundaries, by losing yourself and focusing only on this person. I know I've made some mistakes in my previous relationships. In some instances, I didn't value myself and tolerated shitty treatment. And in other instances, I didn't understand who my partner was. You need to get to know people well before you decide if they are right for you, if they can meet your needs in a relationship. Those are just two examples of original mistakes that led to unhappy relationships. So labeling my previous relationships or exes as toxic wouldn't be helpful. Instead of labeling people or their actions toxic, let's be more helpful to them and ourselves. Let's provide them with constructive feedback. Like, hey, you know, when you do such and such, it makes me feel so and so. Or please don't do that. I don't appreciate it. Here is a secret. Magic things happen when you do this. You stand up for yourself and you also communicate that you care about yourself. In other words, you don't take shitty treatment. But something else also happens. You actually communicate to your partner that he also matters. His behaviors can hurt or make someone happy. After working with hundreds of people, I find that people who don't feel relevant often do these things that make other people unhappy or sad. So by standing up for yourself, you are providing the space for growth for both parties. 
Contrast this with just labeling someone toxic. You're just alienating them. What I do with my clients, I help women feel confident and communicate their needs, desires, and boundaries in a way that men find inspiring. These men often say that their partners make them want to be a better man. They feel they want to put in the effort to resolve the problems in the relationship, to make their partners happy. Yes, there is a better way of looking at things if you want to meet someone amazing, worthy of your heart, who is ready for a real relationship with you. But there is so much more. This is just a small part of what I teach in my program. There is so much advice that may or may not be helpful. In this video, I tell you about one more thing that I find that's not helpful in building secure, healthy relationship. Subscribe to my channel if you want more useful tips on relationships. Ring the bell so you can get all my videos. And let's share this. Let's make this world a secure place for everybody.